Each day for me starts with a double espresso, and while I used to use a fancy, expensive machine, I've gotten to realize the efficiency of coffee pods. Now I'm an espresso convert. I wanted to try one of Nespresso's most popular machines to see what makes it so special. So in this review of the Breville Nespresso Inicia, I'll show you how it works, what the coffee is like, as well as the pros and maybe one or two big cons you'll want to be aware of after having it here in my home for about two weeks. Some out there may be wondering, is a Nespresso machine worth it? I wasn't that into Nespresso at first, but a couple of things changed my mind. After staying with friends that both had Nespresso machines, I discovered that I actually like the coffee and it's a really quick and easy way to get a good espresso. I chose the Inicia because it's relatively small while still being kind of stylish. It measures about 5 inches wide by 12 inches long and 9 inches tall and offers two sizes of coffee with two presets. I don't add milk to my coffee so all I wanted was something for straight up espressos. There's really no setup required for this machine, just plug it in and push one of the buttons to power it on. It's ready to go immediately. The kit I bought also included a sample pack of Nespresso capsules which is a nice way to try some different coffee. When it comes to the power, this machine gives you 19 bars of pressure from its pump and it has a 27 ounce water tank. It is super small though and weighs almost nothing, just about 5 pounds. The first time you run the machine, Nespresso recommends you run a cycle of water through it first before you brew any coffee. Almost immediately, the water tank started leaking all over my counter. Now, thinking I had just set it up incorrectly, I took it apart and put it back together again, but same problem. For some reason, the machine was oddly leaky. Now, once I got the brewing process underway and actually started using it regularly, the leaks seemed to have gone away, but it doesn't give me a whole lot of confidence to see that in the beginning, so it is something I will have to keep an eye on. I later went to the Nespresso website and saw that many other customers are complaining about this device being leaky, so be warned. Though I didn't realize it at the time, you can program the exact size of drink you want your Inicia to make, both for the small and the large size. You can check out my full video here of how to do that, just search it here on the channel. Let's talk about the cost. Nespresso pods can be had on the Nespresso website for about 80 cents to $1.25 per pod, compared to the cost of a coffee shop espresso, that's a bargain. Brewing a coffee is as simple as turning the machine on and waiting for it to heat up, which takes less than 20 seconds, and it's about 10 seconds faster than my other machine. I'm impressed with how fast this is. You pop in a capsule, pull down the arm to lock the machine, and then choose your drink size. My espresso brewed in about 10 or 15 seconds. One of the things I like about the Inicia and really all Nespresso machines is that the espresso comes out nice and thick. It's not watery. It ends up with a nice crema on top and it's actually really hot and definitely hot enough for me. Now you can argue crema has nothing to do with quality, but it is a nice touch that makes the espresso look appealing. This machine, like other Nespresso machines, doesn't have an adjustable brewing temperature. It comes basically out of the factory set to about 83 to 86 degrees Celsius, according to Nespresso. Nespresso intends this to be a hot but drinkable temperature, so you can sip your espresso right away. And it says if it's not hot enough for you, you can preheat your cup. I took temperature measurements and the espresso at brewing ranged from 153 Fahrenheit or 67 Celsius up to 170 Fahrenheit or 76 Celsius. Some folks might not appreciate that you can't adjust the water temperature, but I was really fine with the factory setting. The Breville Nespresso Inicia has some handy features. There's an energy saver feature which shuts it off after a few minutes if you don't use it again. And the water tank holds more than enough water for 13 double shots before it needs a refill. There's a flip out cup riser which actually works really well for smaller espresso cups, but it's really poorly designed for larger cups with the rim of the cup being almost too close to the spout. Because the cup riser only flips up and it's not removable, it actually gets in the way of getting a larger coffee mug into a good position. I think this is really poor design and hopefully will be reworked in future configurations. There's also a pod bin that holds about 10 discarded pods and all the pieces can go in the dishwasher. The DeLonghi Nespresso machine I currently have is a pretty quiet brewer, but this Breville Nespresso Inicia does make a noticeable and fairly loud buzzing noise. 
That noise stays on throughout the entire brewing cycle and it is really annoying. In comparison to my DeLonghi Ascenza Mini, it sounds like a freight train rolling through the kitchen. Now, while I'm exaggerating, this is a significant flaw in this machine as far as I'm concerned. Hey, since you're still with me here, I'd like to think it's because you're enjoying this video or finding it helpful. If so, please consider sending me a super thanks. I spent almost six hours testing, comparing, writing, shooting, and editing this video, and it's just me here on the channel, so a super thanks from you would be really appreciated. Overall, this machine is a stylish and capable Nespresso machine that does the job well. It's small, but it isn't the smallest espresso brewer Nespresso makes. Here, the bigger footprint does allow for additional pods in the disposal bin and a bit more water in the tank. This model has an industrial chic look that gives it a little more style than some other Nespresso machines. The coffee it makes is delicious, hot and thick with a beautiful crema, and I like you can customize the sizes so it's perfect for any morning routine. The water tank is plenty big enough so I don't feel like I'm constantly refilling it. For those who want a bigger water tank, there are larger machines out there and they come with more features and a higher price too. If there are any cons to this machine, for some it might be that you can't adjust the water temperature, but for me it wasn't a big issue. No, my biggest gripe was the loud and buzzing noise during the entire brewing process. If you also think that something like that would annoy you, I can absolutely recommend my Nespresso Essenza Mini as a quieter alternative. The other potential downsides to this machine include the inept cup riser and the potential for leaks. Now, while I had a fine experience with it, you'll want to weigh these cons carefully. The Breville Nespresso Essenza sells for about $209 Canadian, though I have seen it on sale for about $139. You can watch my full review of the Essenza Mini, which is my number one pick for a great all-around Nespresso machine, or check out a more full-featured Nespresso machine and see what that has to offer right now.